name is Marina and I'm an independent consultant at Epilect Commons. Today we shall be discussing the various sections of a research proposal. Let me just dive right in. The sections are Title of Research Study The Goal and Specific Objectives Target Group and Geographic Location Problem Statement, Background and Justification The Methodology, which is a really big section Time Frame and Work Schedule Key Personnel Involved in the Study Budget Breakdown and Summary I think these are basically the key sections of a proposal Let's just dive and look at them step by step Title of a research study, it's very important to list your title clearly so the reader understands what you are researching in detail. It's very important to be clear and specific about your title. Main objectives. Your objective should be really very clear. What is it that you're hoping to achieve by doing this research study? They should be smart. Your objective should be specific. They should be measurable. You should be able to measure and quantify your objectives. They should be time-bound. You should state by when do you hope to achieve something. If you have more than one objective, it's important to list them in the order of importance. Okay. Now, once you've talked about the objectives, you can then briefly mention your target group. Which group are you going to be doing the research on? Is it going to be all adults? Is it going to be children? Newborn babies? Just briefly list. You will go into detail later in the methodology. Briefly list your population and the geographic area you're going to be looking at. Next is the problem statement. What is the problem exactly? Why do you want to do this study? What drove you to do this study? list the problem. For your problem statement, you should have done a literature review, uh, extensive literature review, investigating the previous research that has been done on the topic, published research that has been done by other researchers on the topic you want to study. Are there any gaps? Is that why you want to do the study? To address some of the gaps that you have identified the gaps that have not been covered by any other research out there. So a very detailed literature review um, will give support to um, justify your research. Okay. So once you've listed that, you dive in, into the methodology. Now, the methodology is a very, very important section of the research proposal. So the methodology it's basically um, a systematic way of solving the research problem. You are explaining systematically how you are going to be, you know, solving the research problem. Now, how is the research done scientifically? This is another way to look at the methodology section. Okay. Researchers need to know which study design to use in the methodology. You have to describe which study design you're going to be using because um, you have to pick a good study design that will help you to achieve your goals. If you are looking, let's say, at prevalence, then definitely you have to pick a study design that is going to give you the ability to measure prevalence. If you're going to be looking at incidents, you're going to have to choose a specific uh, study design, you know, depending on the question, depending on the goals and objectives of your study, you will be picking a specific study design. So examples of study designs, some of these are cohort studies, case control studies, randomized control trials depending on your topic, depending on your problem, question, that is what you are going to be choosing. You are going to be choosing a specific 
steady design. So in the methodology section, you need to mention your steady design in detail how you are going to design your steady. You are going to mention your sample size calculation. How are you going to calculate the sample size for your steady? How are you going to uh, achieve that? What are you going to take into consideration? Are there going to be any assumptions? Um, what is your minimum sample size going to be? These are all very important things to mention in the methodology. How are you going to be um, looking at the data? What is the data analysis you are going to be having in your research study? Okay. What software tools are you going to be using? Is it SPSS? Are you going to be using Stata? Are you going to be using SAS? You need to mention all these things. If you are having a qualitative study, are you going to be using uh, Atlas TI, let's say, for um, uh, transcription? Um, would you ha be having a mixed methods approach? Are you going to be having quantitative aspects? as well as qualitative aspects in your research study. Okay, this is very, very important uh, to mention. Now, you're, you're going to go into detail into your target groups. What are the different target groups that you're going to be doing the study on? Is this going to be a study looking at, let's say, prostate cancer, in which case your target group would probably be men over the age of 50. Are you looking at certain defects among uh, you know, newborn babies? So your target group is going to be, you know, maybe fetuses and infants. Are you going to be looking at diseases of pregnancy? You know, anemia in pregnancy, let's say. Maybe your target group is going to be pregnant women. So it's very important to explain in the methodology your target group um, in detail, inclusion criteria, exclusion criteria, and then the geographic location uh, and any facilities that you're going to target. Which country are you doing the study in? Which town or village? Which area in that town are you targeting and why are you picking that area? Did you get some statistics whilst you were doing your background and literature review to justify you picking that specific area? Are you doing your study in a school? Are you doing your study in a hospital, clinic? So your reason for picking those schools or hospitals or clinics to do your study in um, need to be justified okay all right so talked a little bit about the methodology now we are going into the time frame and work schedule you need to clearly list your time frame for the whole study how long is your study going to take is it going to take two years is it going to take you one year is it going to take you six months just explain, you know, explain how long your study is going to take you. This is very important. Each section of your activities needs to be put into the time frame. It's possible to use a GAM chart for this when you want to schedule activities in terms of sequence. What needs to come first? What needs to come second? what needs to come third and last. A sequence of different activities throughout the whole time period of your research study. This is very important. Time frame and work schedule so that the reader needs to under, is able to understand exactly what you're going to be doing. Okay, next is listing the key personnel. Who are the principal investigators? who are the co-investigators, who are other collaborating investigators involved in the study. Are you going to have a research project manager? 
Who are the research assistants that are going to be taking part? Will there be any data clerks? Are you going to be hiring additional staff? Now, it's very important to list the qualifications and experience of the principal investigators, co-investigators and other staff because um, it's important to have sufficient experience to be able to carry out the study adequately, to be able to have the knowledge to conduct a good study. It's very important to list your qualifications and even attach your CV in the research proposal. Next, we are going to be talking about the budget. What is the total budget for the study? And list a breakdown of the budget in terms of, let's say, salaries for staff, travel, accommodation, uh, reagents that you may be using. Are you going to be having laboratory reagents that you need to use? Any equipment that you need to purchase? Is it PCR machines? Is it, you know, other specific machines that you need to be using for your uh, research study? This is very important. And then at the end, you include a summary. Just go over the whole uh, summary. Um, summarize all the points that you have uh, made. And the summary actually can be put at the beginning of your proposal in case the reader wants to read it and have a very quick idea of what it is that you want to be doing. Important to note is that the monitoring evaluation section is often also included in the research proposal, especially for those in the development sector. So if, you, if you're a non-government organization, an NGO, then it is actually very, very important to include the monitoring evaluation um, plan for your uh, research uh, proposal. One thing that I also probably forgot to mention is that the instruments, instruments should be very clearly explained in the methodology section. Are you going to be having some questionnaires? Are you going to be having other instruments that you're going to be using during the research study, kindly include those in your research proposal. Now, when you have human subjects that are participants of the research study, it's very important to attach an informed consent. So, you should attach an informed consent document and the informed consent briefly outlines the study, what is going to happen in the study, and allows the participant to um, give permission to be in the study. So they actually give their consent for participating uh, in the study. So the informed consent is actually very important to include in your research proposal. In fact, um, Research proposals are sometimes uh, not approved if that section is absent. Um, it's good to know that your research proposal is being submitted to a research ethics committee for approval. Yeah, that is actually a very important part as well to mention. So I think I have listed and gone over the key components of a research proposal and I hope that uh, at least now you have a better idea of the key aspects of a research proposal and if you would like me to do another video and go uh, much deeper into each of the sections of a research proposal and give examples kindly let me know so once again, my name is Marina and I'm an independent consultant at Epilect Cons. Uh, it's a consultancy for public health, health research, health education, uh, training and tutoring students who need assistance and support. Um, I very much look forward to reading your comments. If you could kindly like the video if you found the information interesting and please
please subscribe to my channel and kindly click on the bell so that you receive notifications when new videos are uploaded. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much and bye-bye.